On this episode of Stock Tune Knot, we're going to be working on the rear of the bike. But first, new intro. All right guys, welcome to episode two of Stock 2 Knot. If you're not familiar with this build series, it's where we take a stock bike and modify it. So before we go into what we're gonna be doing today, let me go ahead and give a shout out to Mr. Motoman Tooth. That new intro that you just saw, courtesy of him. If you guys haven't checked him out, check out the links down below. He's also a motor vlogger, but also a graphic designer. And as you guys can see, can do amazing stuff with video trailers. So if you're looking for something like that, he might be able to help you out. All right, with that being said, if you're not familiar with this series, it is a Patreon funded and it's a sponsored funded build series. So what that means is we have patrons that are watching us right now on the live stream. So if you guys want to join, you can see this on Tuesday night versus Saturday morning. Today we're going to be working on the rear of the bike. So we're going to be taking off the rear wheel, replacing it with white powder coated wheels with the Dunlop Scoot Smart tires on them. We're also going to be replacing the sprocket, the chain, which I've never done before. So that should be fun. And also the pads, rotors, and we're going to be putting on the NDC chain adjuster. So I'm going to show you how the chain adjuster works stock versus this new easy adjuster. Then we're gonna take our pit bull stands, pop it up, pop off the tire and the wheel, and we're gonna put on spacers on it to make it spin faster, and we're gonna do a spin test to see how quicker it is. And then a little later, we're gonna be giving away a GoPro Hero 3, which goes out to one of our patrons. We gave away Dambo last week. This week, we are doing the Hero 3. We hit 75 patrons, so thank you for all the support. 150, we're giving away the EOS M, so if you wanna check out the link below to become a patron, please do so. Before we go any further, I need to introduce some people that are here with me, help me out this week. So last week was a little bit of a learning curve. I didn't get as much done as I wanted to because I was running between the live chat, recording here and then working on the bike but i brought help this week so help i got mike braps here and andrew what up so they're gonna help me take this guy apart and hopefully we'll be able to knock out everything that i mentioned at the beginning of this video all right let's get to the back of the bike so we got a 10 and a 12 open end and close end wrench here to be able to adjust the chain we also need to break the rear wheel so we got a what do we have a 19 and a 14. all right so the 12 goes on first i'm just gonna use the open wrench here and then you got a little bit of room here. So you just twist them in opposite directions to break that, that tight nut right here. And this one's actually pretty loose already just because we, we loosened it. So you'll end up breaking it like that and then back these, back these out and then do the same thing on the other side. All right, so as you can see, here's the chain bobbling here. If you pull back on it, you can see it just tightens. So that's the process of tightening it. Then you have to adjust these and you line up these little tickers right here. So those little tickers right there on either side obviously have to be even so your wheel is on straight and then you crank it down and then re-tighten everything. Right now we're gonna go ahead and take out the stock adjusters and we're gonna replace them with the NDC ones. So to be able to do that without going bonkers with lifting this up on the swing arm because this doesn't have spool connectors on the swing arm, that's the reason we're using these. We're gonna have Andrew lean the bike over, we're gonna pull out the axle, slide the uh, tensioners out and slide the new ones in, put it all back together and then we're gonna start working on the back of the bike. All right, you guys ready? Yeah, ready. All right. I wasn't ready. All right, dropping the gloves off because you got to get your fingers in there. All right, I'm also using a screwdriver. Once I get through this guy and pull this out, just to hold everything in place, bead her through. Okay, solid. Okay. So we're just gonna take this guy out, put this guy in. Why is that not going in? The top one, you're gonna wanna make sure that's all the way loose. All right, Andrew's saying we gotta loosen this guy all the way up. Say when, Andrew? That's about good. About good? Yeah. Then that should slide in like yep, that? Exactly, and it's gonna put tension upward, so. Okay, so we're gonna try to get this guy back in there. Boom, slides all the way in. So we'll tighten the top one. Top one. So we'll tighten this top one, so it's just a uh, four Allen hex, whatever, hoodie. All right, so we'll lean this guy up. Let me try to get this guy in. Spacer's back in. Now we're just gonna slide this guy in and wiggle it until she finds her hole. All right, now I'm gonna do the same on this guy. And we already got the spools in there, so these don't come with the spools. You gotta buy these, but links to all these parts are in the description down below. Take my screwdriver out. Spacer's still kind of holding there. He's gotta line everything up. Andrew says tighten this guy first, so we'll do that. And that actually has nothing, just it holds it in place, right? Exactly, it's gonna put pressure upwards and it's gonna lock it into the swing arm. Okay. You just wanna make sure you're lined up as good as you can get so you don't sandwich the end of the bolt. 
And even though this wheel's still on the ground, it's still adjusting it? Yeah. It'll move the axle forward and backwards, however far you need it, as long as you're loosened up on the axle nut. So we're just going to back it off a few turns and we're good to go. We just want to make sure it's an even on both sides, otherwise you're going to get some massive wheel wobble on the back. There you go. They're adjusted. All you have to do is tighten up the axle and you're good to go. Alright, so that's how easy it is. So now we have the spool. So we're going to go ahead and throw the pit bull stand on and jack it up so you guys can see how easy that is now with the spools. Uh, to be able to use the pit bull stands. All right, so with these pit bull stands, these adjust forward and backwards, and then you can go in and out with this guy. You just loosen that, slides left or right. And this is the Hayabusa rear uh, pit bull stand. Again, links to all this stuff down below in the description. Good, ready? All right, here we go, going up. There she is. All right, now that the pit bull stands on there, we're gonna go ahead and do the spin test. So what I was talking about was the spacers. Let me get those real quick. All right, so we have these spacers, which are machine spacers here. And uh, yeah, they're just seeing, what are they, Andrew? You got them. So they're CNC machine spacers, just, yeah, they're just smoother? C yeah, they're smoother. They fit the actual contour of the bearing. Basically, you have your bearing and you have your centerpiece. It's basically putting all the pressure where it's spinning, not on the outside where it's not spinning. You know, it's the way it's supposed to be. So with Honda Grom, you know, it's a, it's a commonly friendly bike. So there's a lot of things they didn't do for the maximum performance. That's what we're going to be trying to change with this build series. So we're going to throw these guys on after we do the spin test. So this is the stock setup. Three, two, one, go. Six point one one on that one. Okay, we'll do another one. Six point three two. All right. So let's just say six. We round down. It's yeah. going to be. It's going to be That's noticeably right. different, right? Yeah. So we're just going to say six is what the the spin is, and then we're going to replace the spacers now and put everything on the wheels and then put that back on the bike, and then we'll do the test again. So let's go ahead and get the white wheels out and start putting some parts on them. Before we go any further, let me go ahead and give away this GoPro Hero 3 Plus. So this is the first GoPro that I used and started my YouTube channel on. So part of the Patreon, I like to give back to the patrons. I just picked the random uh, generator, one through 75, and Mr. Cameron uh, Carriker, is that right? Yeah, thank you to uh, Cameron and all the patrons that supported the uh, the Patreon. If you guys want to check it out and join it, 150, we have an EOS M, which is going to be uh, given out to one of you guys as well. So get on board and uh, you know enjoy this live show before uh, it comes out every Saturday morning. All right, let's get back to the bike. Okay, so explain what you're doing here. First things first, we're going to take the master link out. Um, it's easier to put it in gear if you're one person, so it locks forward. So when you put pressure on it and you hit it, basically you just get a flathead, you find the V opening right here at the bottom, and then just one little swift little pop. There you go, that's it. Grab it, you're good to go. Push on the master link on the back side. There's the front side. There you go. So now that we got that down, we can pretty much drop this wheel, take the axle out, and the whole wheel is going to fall down. So if you're one person, just put your hand in the wheel. It's not heavy at all. Put pressure upwards. You can just pull the axle out with one hand. That's really it. Slide it out. Caliper has a little slide place, and that's it. So with these spacers, take note where your spacers are, because they do go in a certain uh, position, direction. So one's a little bit bigger, one's a little bit smaller. So that guy goes on the sprocket side, this guy on the brake side. Actually, before we go any further, we're going to break this down because we need these nuts here to, or these bolts here to be able to put them on this bike for the different rotors. So we're just going to break these down. So take them on a DeWalt. This is actually in the, uh, the video description below. So if you guys want to get this exact one, I linked it for you guys. So there we go. Red Loctite on it. So we'll use that when we put it back on. Okay, pops right off. So the rotors were a six on this guy, on the hex, and then a 12 on these. Nope, 14, huh? This guy. 14, 14, I'm sorry. This guy. So a 14, again, 10, 12, eight, and 14 can get you pretty much everything disassembled or assembled on this bike. Guy slides off. So these little spacers, be careful because they rip in two. I have a couple like that. And then I need that guy. Be careful too, there's a spacer in the middle, right in here. The taper basically faces inside to the bearing. Alright, so we're gonna throw that wheel down, put this guy up, and repeat the process. 
So first time I put these in, I thought they went in like that. They don't. They actually sandwich this guy. So just so you guys know. And you wouldn't be able to get the wheel on the actual thing. It would actually uh, be a little higher. So I did make that mistake the first time trying to do that. You grab the hub. You fit them into the slots. Nice couple little taps. That's it. So sprockets, we're doing a uh, 34 stock in the rear and then we're going up one in the front. So we're gonna do a 16 in the front. That's just based on asking on uh, Facebook. So I went on Facebook, someone else that had this, I think it was Jacob had this uh, same setup. Asked him, he recommended just going up one in the front. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I got the PBI uh, aluminum sprocket here for the rear, uh, 34 tooth, which is the same as stock. That guy in, pretty self-explanatory. He goes one way, not seed or sit right on top of that. Which side? Uh, the, no, no, opposite side. Yeah, there's little lock rings on it. What's that, so it doesn't back out? Exactly, it's like the Teflon coated uh, lock nuts, so they just don't back out, that's really it. So you have those on your axle too. The more you know. The more you know. And you know what the torque is on this? Two Tight. Uh, two ugga uggas. Yep, go to right when they stop going. There you go. Give one final tug on it. Yep. So there's specs for all this stuff and I got a Honda manual, but I found out that if you torque, uh, especially some of these smaller bolts, you snap them real easily. So hand tight, then give them a little bit, just a little extra, should be good. Yeah. All right, so next up we have uh, brakes. Jesus. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> all right, we got an EBC, nope. <laughs> <laughs> See if you guys know your stuff. Stock to stock. Stock to stock. All right, we got an EBC rear rotor here. There she is. So, boom, links in the description below. We also have some brake pads. First thing we're gonna do is what, Andrew? So, a lot of times the rotors, they come with a protectant on them so they don't rust in the box. I don't know for sure if EBC does it or not. Usually for vehicles, cars, and stuff like that, they come with a little grease on it so it doesn't rust. Um, yeah, you just basically spray it off with some brake clean. Just make sure it's all cleaned up, and that's really it. Any generic brake clean doesn't really matter. There you go. I get that side. You can get the back side. It already went through, so. Make sure the letter's on the outside also. That's a big part. There's a little groove where basically the, the bolts sit in. What the hell? Oh, this is blue. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. But it's blue and a red. Oh, blue and red. That works perfect, then. Blue is, yeah. Anyway, so... Oh. This has red Loctite on it, but blue, it's okay. It's better than nothing, but they put it in a red container, which is kind of weird. All right, I'm just going to get it started, so a little bit of Loctite there. He's going to hold that in place so it kind of stays centered. We're going to do cross pattern tightening, so we'll get it hand tight. There's a spec for these, but we're going to do the old... Uh, backyard uh, garage shop here and just get them hand tight they got loctite on them so they shouldn't back out that's that's good andrew agree yeah perfect yeah pretty easy to take these guys off just a uh retainer clip and a pin yep there's the pin and these should pop right out so you got the piston in there which is pushing the pads together so just give it a little bit of force and you can have a little bit more room there so you have that Cap right there, remove that, then you have a five hex bolt in here, pin holding these guys in. So we'll just loosen that guy. Get a socket or rocket rather. Thank you. Actually give me the give me the give me the gun. The ugga yeah. ugga. Alright. So this is why this thing pays for itself. No hand tidy tidy. Alright, so those just flop out like that you got that retainer clip right there so we have our stock one on the left which still has a lot of life and then we have this aftermarket EVC high performance brake pad here a little groove right here there's kind of two little two little flaps that go there basically it fits in perfectly right there slides right in you just push it right up against it and that's it. Pin slides right back where you got it. All right, it's in there. Yeah. So we just have to tighten this guy down a little bit. And our torque spec says what? A couple of uggaduggas. Uggaduggas? Yeah, you want to, you want to do the favor? No, no, it's no. your off. Right. You go ahead. I, <laughs> I torqued down so much. So only two uggaduggas on this guy. 
Just make sure it's the pins going through both the caliper or the both the uh, pads. Pads. So you got little uh, you got little holes in each pad where they just kind of sit and hold them in place. Yeah. Just hit it a couple times. Should be good. Once you first get on the bike, there's gonna be no pressure, so you have to prime that. So uh, that'll just allow it to slide into the rotor once we get the wheel up. Because once you get the wheel up, especially by yourself, very hard to get everything lined up. Spacers, uh, the rotor, all this stuff. This guy's got to be in the groove. It gets really complicated trying to do it all by yourself. So the more you can do uh, beforehand, like pulling apart the pads, the easier it's going to be when you reinstall. So these are going to be a little bit different each. Um, they're not too big of a difference. But best bet is when you take the old ones off, put them in orientation of where you took them off exactly off the wheel like that. So what you can do is you can put them down on the ground right next to it and just kind of make sure you got the right width, right? Yeah, right width. That little ridge right there, that little ridge is going to go in the wheel bearing, well actually on the axle seal, um, and it's going to lock it pretty much in place. All right, so it just wiggles in place. So you just kind of force it in there and sits right in there. You can see it's kind of It'll fall out, but it's kind of, you'll see it's definitely seated. And then the same with the other side. That one's a little bit more loose. <laughs> oh boy. Is that normal? Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. The, the axle seal's just a little different. Take it out one yeah. Well, I mean, obviously they're a little bit thinner too, so that's fine. Okay. Yeah, All right. Anyway, um, these are a little thinner, so we'll hope for the best. So when you're putting this guy on, just make sure this sits right there. So there's something in this swing arm, just kind of like a groove where it slides in. That'll just help it from uh, falling down on you. All right, let's get this guy in. Andrew, you want to take this side? Before we go any further, actually, we have these sliders, these uh, axle sliders from TST. If you don't have these, these are I got these on both bikes. Uh, I highly recommend these, especially for the front forks. Save your forks really easy. All right, explain what you're doing. All right, so you got your axle. You're going to want to clean it off and then just put any sort of silicone lube or anything really on that. Uh, right now we have some cable lube, which will, I guess, do. We're just going to put it on there just so we can coat the whole thing. To clean it off, you really want to get in there, you know. It's, so <laughs> we're going to want to make sure that's all lubed up. Silicone grease works really well, especially on the wheel bearing, wheel bearing sockets right in there. That's really it. Make sure that's all lubed up, and then we're going to get your axle sliders. Yep. So you just have to put it on one side in the beginning, so like that. And then this guy is going to go in like that. And, uh, yeah, so you have to get it in there, and then you put these on at the end. But uh, I've done it a couple times where I put this whole thing on and totally forgot about it. Quick lube on the spacers. That one's good. You want to hit this one? Yeah. Give it a so remember, we were at six seconds for the spin test. So once we get the chain back on, we'll do the spin test again and see uh, what this more machine, more cleaner uh, setup does. All right, so I'm just gonna lift it up. It's great to have two people. If you have to do it by yourself, get low, use your foot, just prop it up or get something to jack it up. Uh, you just gotta keep it in place. As soon as you get it through the first hole, you can uh, you know put a little less pressure on it. All right, here we go. So the spacers are the big thing. Trying to hold everything in place, even with two people. Go ahead and get your side in. And then, as soon as it gets in enough, I'm gonna stop for a second. My spacer actually popped out over here. So you can see it just pops out. And that happens when you're all by yourself and it sucks. And then the wheel's falling down. So just make sure you get it back in there. Make sure it's seated right before you uh, ram that uh, that axle through the, through the wheel and the bearing. Yeah. Get this guy back in there. Again, check your uh, your brake rotor, or caliper rather, make sure it's still seating right. We're good. All right, ram her in. There it is, all right, hold on. All right, go ahead, we're good now. And it pops right through, all right. So we're good on that, so on this side, slide that guy on, and then we'll just tighten this guy down, then we put the caps on, and we're good. But we're gonna have to wait till we adjust the chain, so before we put the caps on, uh, we're just gonna get this tight enough so uh, we can adjust it once we get the chain on. So we're not gonna go too ham on the uh, on the tightness here, but we will just get it a little bit so we can keep it from wobbling around. Just hand tight. That's good enough. Huh? 
putting a new chain on, it's always good to have the most adjustment out of it. So it's easiest to just adjust the chain tensioners all the way forward. Basically the chain has a small break-in period, especially with all the stuff we do, <laughs> the clutch dumping and all the fun shenanigans we have. But basically it's gonna stretch the chain out just a tiny, tiny bit um, and you're gonna have a lot more adjustment that way and you'll never really run out of adjustment as long as you have an upgraded chain. Got it. So we're gonna be running the DID 420. Again, it's 120 links, so we're gonna break this down to 106 links. So stock is 106 links. Keep in mind, if you go too crazy with the different size sprockets, so if you go like a 45 in the rear, uh, chances are you're gonna to need to change the uh, amount of links that you have in there. So this is a guide which I'll put in the video description below if you're interested in finding out what sprocket and what the benefits are. Uh, check that link below and it'll also give you the uh, amount of links that are required for each setup. All right, so we're gonna take the front uh, sprocket cover off and then throw on the 16 tooth and then we'll put the chain on. All right, we'll use this opportunity to uh, let you guys know about the key tag. So if you wanna pick up a no loopies key tag, you can do so in the video description below. There she is. We definitely don't wanna have any loopies on this bike once we get her done. She is gonna be clean. All right, so we got an eight millimeter engine case uh, bolt here, which is the same on the other side as well. So just, just two bolts here, one and the other one's down low. Again, using our Bill Walt. Hoodicky here, and then you have a uh, cable clip up here. Just spread them. Spread them. <laughs> and then uh, you can just take these off and leave that retainer in place. Okay. We'll just leave that to the side. All right. So we have two. Here's your uh, 15 tooth sprocket here. So stock sprocket. You have to have a chain on this to take it off or what? No, you can put it in gear. It works better if you put it in gear. Oh. Okay, put it in gear and I'll lock the sprocket. Okay. All right, so Andrew just said a good tip. I never did this when the chain was off or maybe it wasn't in neutral, but if you keep it in neutral, this guy's just gonna spin when you try to take it off, but you put it in gear, then you can, uh, you can just send it. And Andrew gave me the wrong size again. It's just pushing against the uh, center shaft. Oh. You just gotta really? Okay. All right, so push really hard, you sure? Yeah, make sure it's angled a little bit, kind of, just a tad bit. Yeah. Then <laughs> T-handle. All right, there we go. So we're busting out the T-handles, putting down the DeWalt, the DeWalt you build us. Did it come right off? Oh, it came right off. All right, so there's some times in life where you just probably shouldn't send it with the DeWalt. Even though it makes life easier, take a step back and uh, maybe just uh, grab the T-handles. So that's, that's strange, I never ran into that before. So what's the deal with that? So because of 10 points versus whatever amount of points. Okay. Basically that 10 point isn't gonna, isn't gonna touch as much as the surface area as that one. So learn something new every day, so that one's better? <laughs> yeah, it's better. For Grom applications, yeah, it's better. Okay, all right, but we got it off, so now uh, let's put the other one on. There's a little slot that's machined on there for this little tab to spin freely. You just slide it, you just kind of twist it until it lines up. You pull it right off. Nice. And then after that, that's basically the locking mechanism. You just rock it, and it slides right off. Okay, let's put the new one on. Okay, we got another PBI. This one again is going up one in the front, so 16 tooth. And this one is stainless steel. Good time to clean all the schmutz out of here. Basically, what'd you call it? Schmutz. Oh, nice, schmutz. Dude. All the schmutz that builds up in here. Uh, that's gonna be all the chain grease and all the stuff that gets on the chain and it gets slung in there. It's basically like a little cavity area. Yeah. So you can just spray it on there. I mean, if you're outside, you can spray it with degreaser stuff like that. Basically, just grab that and you can just take it off. It's not crazy big, but I mean, there's a lot of stuff that builds up in there. Wow. Well, so let's look at take a look at that that schmutz. Another schmutt. So that's mm. that's high quality schmutt. You're gonna get your PBI gear. You're gonna get all the numbers and everything on the outside. I don't think it's too big of a deal, but we're just gonna do that anyways. When in doubt, put the numbers on the outside. There's gonna be a little groove that's in there. You're gonna push it all the way in. Okay. You're gonna get your lock ring. You're gonna put it on the groove too. A lot of people get confused on this. They don't realize that it doesn't 
there's a little slot basically where it spins free. You're going to get it to where it spins free and then you're going to pull your sprocket out. And you're going to spin that until it gets up to the threaded part. You can see it aligns perfectly in there. So what do people do? They just push well, it all the way in like yeah, they, they want to get it tight? They push it all the way in and then they push this little lock ring. They realize, hey, oh, it doesn't it doesn't lock so in. So there's actually that groove where that guy just sits. Yep. There's a groove where it sits and it spins. Yeah, we see it. So you're going to pull it out. And you're just going to spin that until you get to the threaded part right there. The sprocket kind of sits in the middle of the shaft, so that's kind of the weird part. You don't push the sprocket all the way back. There you go. Get a little, get a little twist on it. We have a T-handle, so it's a little bit hard to get some torque on it, but both of them on, and that's really it. All right, we got the sprocket in, so now we're going to put the uh, chain on, but it's 120 links. Again, it has to be 106. That's stock length, and when we go one up in the front or one down in the front, it's still going to stay, stay stock length, so 106. So we got to take the chain breaker, which I never did before, but Mr. Andrew has. <laughs> Explain it to us. So basically on your chain there's links and then there's little rivets in between every single link. This breaker basically is a pin, it's a deep pinner and it just puts tension on the pin and basically where you need it to cut um, you just measure where you want with the sharpie and then you just hammer it down and then it'll push that pin out and there you go you have a shortened chain. So if we need to go 106 are there any uh, tips? Do you count from 1 to 106 or you go backwards and then add the match the link in? What's the best uh, practice to counting them down? Best bet is to adjust your wheel where you need it Put the chain on and then double check exactly where you need it and then break it from there. So yeah. instead of counting, just actually it's, put it on and see what practically works. Exactly, yeah. You're you're always going to want to double check your work and sure, see sure. where you're All right. at. So. Let's bust this guy open and uh, break it. Right, let's compare stock to not. So here's our stock chain. Obviously, it's got some miles on it. But the O-rings, what do the O-rings do, mister? Oh, my Lord. What happened here? <laughs> I'm right there with you. We got schmutt all over us. <laughs> schmutz again. I oh, mean, the schmutt attacks. Oh, schmutz. All right, so we got the stock on my on your left. So right here, stock, and then Andrew's got the the knot stock. So what's the difference between the stock and then the knot O-ring, the DID? What's the benefit of going with an O-ring chain versus this guy? So basically, you got the non O-ring, which is the stock chain. You have metal and metal touching each other. Creates a lot of friction, a lot of heat, a lot of wear and tear. Basically, the main thing would be that wear and tear between the two links. Um, it won't heat them up and lock them up and like that one it will. Um, that's really it. I mean, it's a lot stronger. It's a lot more reliable. And Yeah. So let's uh, throw the chain on, I guess, now and then yeah. measure where we need to cut it. Yeah. All right. Break it. Yep. All right. First things first, uh, we're going to use this word a lot. Schmutz. Yep. There's a lot of schmutz on it. Um, to prevent... All this schmutz from getting on your tire, on the outside tire. Oh, wow. uh, you you're gonna just get a rag. I mean, you don't really need to clean it all off. It does come pre-lubed. Just kind of clean it off real quick. And it doesn't really matter which side is which, outside, inside. There's no markings, nothing like that. It's still gonna say DID 420. All right, so to get this in there, we just pretty much just feed it in, right? Yep. Spinning this guy around, and then it's gonna come out. What he's doing now is just lining it up, getting it tight, and then, uh, Figuring out where it should be, right? Yeah. Basically, all you need is a is a sharpie. Okay. A sharpie. Sharpie engaged. Sharpie engaged. You're gonna want to line it up. You can leave it about a tooth off or so. If he puts it on the sprocket and then pulls it down. If you put it about halfway down on the sprocket, right in the middle, and then line that up. We're gonna leave one tooth off. So we're gonna have a little bit of slack, so we have a tiny bit of adjustment. So I would say right here, right, and then we'd have the master link here or one there because yeah. it's a little loose right now basically if you press it off you press it off here there's going to be the inner and outer so you see the inner the inner two links are going to be here and then you're going to have outer two you're going to want to match up inner two and then outer two on these ones so let's say maybe two links off yeah so see we're too short right now so what we're going to do is we're going to go down one that won't be good because you have two inner ones. And it's almost better to ha leave an extra one because you can always punch it off again, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so if you if you end up with like 110 when you need, well, 107 when you need 106, even with the master link, you can always take another one off. Exactly, yeah. So this one's going to be the outer two. So we're going to mark that. We're going to want outer two on them. So basically those those outer ones are going to fit onto this outer inner one. So, right, so now we can take it off or we leave it on? Yeah, we can leave it on, take it off. You can do whatever you want. It's easier just to leave it on so you don't have to refeed it. Leave it on, it. just press it from right here, huh? Yep. 
Yeah. So you have two threaded parts. You have your main section, which kind of brings it where you need it to, and then you have your pin press. Basically, that's going to push the pin right through. There's a little hole at the end. So what you're going to do is you're going to kind of spread it out all the way so you have a big gap. You're going to find where your Sharpie mark is on there. It's easier just to pinch it like that so you kind of have it on out. You're going to get your tool. You're going to have the back side forward. Basically, that pin in the middle, you're going to want it all the way out, all the way in, actually, so you don't have much. You almost want it just to sit right there, right? Exactly. You just want to kind of rest it on there. So we're going to put that right on the back side, make sure it's aligned. We're going to make sure it's all aligned, and we're just going to kind of tighten it until we feel a little bit of pressure. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get our wrenches. This one happens to be a, a 14 and a 14. We're going to hold the, the inner one close and tight. I mean, we can tighten it down a little bit if you want. So that one is moving the pin forward. That one is going to move the shaft which holds it in place. Okay. This back side is the inner one and it's gonna push the pin all the way through. Gotcha. So we're gonna hold the middle one and then we're gonna tighten the outside one. And it's really easy. It it seems, it's almost scary, but there we go. And then you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna keep checking to make sure that your pin is getting pushed, pushed through. You're gonna start feeling it become looser and looser, and eventually it'll just pop right out. You start feeling it get looser and looser, and eventually it's just gonna come right out the other side. You can, I already felt it, I already pressed through. You just gotta thread it all the way. And I can see it coming from this side, the pin actually coming through. And there, there it is. All right, so rivets out, pulled apart. You got the O-ring right there. And then we're just going to connect these guys via the master link, which is right here. So it comes with a little chain grease. Do not eat. <laughs> Always keep away from a child. Noted. We well, could consider that schmutz too. Uh, is this is any concern as far as like mixing schmutz with chain grease? No, you're good. Okay, because yeah. this is a different color. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's before it comes schmutz. <laughs> yeah. It's just pre schmutz. Yeah. Okay, so just going to yeah. just going to go. coat my donut. Bloop. <laughs> All right, so one O-ring in. <laughs> okay, I grab my second O-ring and I just massage it with my grease. Yeah. And Mix we the dirty grease with the clean grease. Yep, yeah. slide her in too. Mm -hmm. There she is. Okay, we're gonna now her, we're, we're gonna put her in the back side of the chain. <laughs> <laughs> so it comes in from that way. Yep. All right. So now we just have the master link, which will complete these two holes. Got the O-rings already pre-smutted up. Put it through the, the holes here on the sprocket. Good. Yeah. Good. Looks like vanilla pudding. That's why they say don't eat, because it looks like vanilla pudding. Yeah, don't definitely don't eat. It's it. been like 20 years since I had vanilla pudding. All right. So master link DID on the outside, probably. Sure. When in doubt, put it on the outside. Okay. Like that, yeah. So that just slides in like that. Now we have this C retainer clip. So, so the retainer clip is what I got wrong at the Smoky Mountain Crawl last year. So I put it in backwards and basically the vibration pushed it out. So it should keep it in tight if you put it in the correct way, right? Exactly, yeah. It actually, the main reason to you stand is, up, this is awkward. Well, <laughs> we got a camera mic over here. So um, he's talking from down there. <laughs> you basically have the C clip and there's a little groove right there. And basically if you put it backwards, it reduces the chance of it catching on anything. I mean, all the stuff that we do, all just road environments, your light pant, your pants. You're pushing it out instead of pulling it in. Exactly, yeah. If anything, if anything were to touch it, it would just tighten it. It wouldn't loosen it. Right. Um, and it won't catch and fling off. That's really it, too. I mean, both reasons, too. So we got the C, the opening, that's going to face the bike, or face the front of the bike, it's or the back? face away. It, face whichever away. way it's moving, you want that indentation groove backwards so okay. it can't catch on anything. Okay. All right, so we just... Put this guy in like so or what? Like yeah. that? Yeah. And then is there any magic to it or just? Uh, yeah, put it in gear real quick. Okay. That's the best of that. In gear. You get your flathead. Okay. And you get your mallet. And you basically just lock it into place. You put it, slide it on. Make sure it's on. Okay. Yep. And then get your flathead. She's slippery. She's been schmutted, so got to really, uh... <laughs> 
she she's extra smoothy. There you go. Okay. Put your flat head on top. Just right on the yep. lip here. Yep. And then you give it a little tap. Give it a little lap. Oh, mm -hmm. there she goes. She 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 spewed. All right, let's try that again. Maybe maybe you can hold her while I yeah, 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 tap her. All right, pick finger. There you go. So clipped in right there. And we'll just do a couple little little onesie twosies. Make sure she rotates. Try not to lose a finger here. So don't do this ever with. Perfect. Well, mm. she's a little loose, so we gotta tighten her. Looks good. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Looks okay. Good. So you can see the difference in the slack here. So obviously that's proper slackness where it should be versus where it was before. We're good to go. Give her some spinnies. Oh, you Wait. know what that means. Oh, oh. We have a spin test to do. <laughs> spin test time. All right, we'll be right back. All right, so when we started this episode, we talked about a spin test. So normally we'd spin this with these new machine spacers and there should be a huge difference. I don't think we're gonna get that today. I did the exact same mod on my bike and the biggest difference was I wasn't changing the chain at the same exact time. Um, the chain is new. There's a lot of thick grease on it, which comes from the factory. Uh, it's not bad by any means, but it will take a little bit for that grease to come off. And it's it's almost like WD-40 versus a, a thick petroleum-based grease. So it's really thick. <laughs> okay. Spinning it isn't... So when, when he got these spacers in, he snapped us a before and a after, the difference between the spins, yeah. huge difference, yeah. huge. So to this day, even like a thousand miles onto them, they're yeah. huge difference. We might have to revisit this by, uh, I don't know, a few months into riding it, but we're gonna do a spin test now. We got the live chat behind us, they're taking their votes. So we got four or five Grommers saying eight seconds, Smokey Cruiser saying seven seconds, Moto Man 2 saying six. Just a reminder, we were right around six seconds on the stock chain. So we're gonna go ahead and spin it again. I'm gonna get my uh, stopwatch out and we're gonna see what this uh, modified spacer will do. Keep it in mind, the chain's brand new, so there's a little bit of slag there. Right? Yeah, okay. okay. All right, let's get, the, uh, let's get the guy going. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> well, that didn't work out. <laughs> so who said 3.23 seconds? Nobody, nobody's a winner, perfect. It's the price is right, baby. If you're over, you're bust. All right, so it's 3.2 seconds. So it had the opposite effect under this. Again, this build series is gonna be very unique. So we'll do one more just for consistency. Reset that one. Three, two, one, go. You give that a little extra. 3.21. All right, so with this mod, <laughs> what do I even say about this? Nice. So, it is proven. There's videos out there. I made one of the videos on YouTube. It is proven, believe me. I wouldn't have been running it for 2,000 miles I didn't, I didn't get bad spacers, right? You didn't get bad spacers. It's just the fact that we put the new chain on. We did all these monsters to the sprockets. It just needs to get yeah. more proper schmutz in it, right? Yeah. yeah. It needs exactly. to break in. A little, a little less schmutz on it and we're good to go. All right. We're going to put the shifter on now. 10 millimeter bolt right here. And then there's a clip, a C-clip type thing, retainer clip on the other side, which just holds it in place. So you just gotta pop that guy off. A little bit of a pain in the ass if you don't have this tool. So you gotta get in there with a couple screwdrivers and try to pry it out. But I'll put a link to the tool below and uh, maybe we'll pick it up next year. Next build. Next build. Season two, we'll have it. So basically this whole linkage right here we're removing. So we're gonna go straight in with the shifter. So the shifter will sit like that, well, like, yeah, I'll take it out of the box, but it'll sit flush just like this, mounted straight into that bolt right there. So if this breaks apart, all this comes with it, and then you lose the ability to shift if you lose that. All right, so he got the clip out, it went flying. That's kind of the way it goes. There goes the washer, that holds in. Now the whole thing should just slide right out. It should go fast. It the, should rear, go the rear set should Oh, we might have to technically lose. come up. Alright, so you also have to take the rear set off, so we're going to do that now. There we go. Alright, so you just got to spread this guy right here, just to be able to get off the gear stem hoodiki. Then this guy should just slide out right here, so. There he goes. Alright, so you're going to have a little nub. <laughs> yeah, slow back. You're going to have a little nub here that stays there. And then we're just going to mount straight to this bolt here. Here she is right here, the IMS shifter, link in the description below. 
The beauty about this is it bends, so if you go down, instead of it breaking, it'll just fold up. And then that goes straight into our stem here. So, And you gotta kinda position it where you want it to be as far as where your foot placement is. So before you tighten it down, make sure you should get on it and really uh, get a feel for it. What I'm gonna do is just kinda get it so it doesn't hit the case, and we'll just worry about it later. We'll, we'll fine tune everything before we go red. All right, in an effort to end this on a positive note, or at least get rid of any questions out there as far as if it's a spacer, if it's a chain, if it's a sprocket. We're gonna do the test on the front. So we're gonna replace, first we're gonna do the stock. So completely stock spacers. We're gonna do a test on that. Then we're just gonna replace only the spacers with the machine ones. You think it will be better? Yeah, sure. should be better. Huh? All right, live chat has given us some uh, estimates on what they think. So uh, we got 15 seconds, 12 seconds, couple five seconds. So. Let's go ahead and do the spin. Let me get my, my timer out. Three, two, one, go. 3.5. Nobody, everybody's over. 3.5 on that one. We're gonna put the other spacers on and we'll be right back. All right, we got the wheel back on. We put the new spacers on. So we're gonna retest it again. First test, 3.5. You ready? Whew. Three. <laughs> you think good or bad? Oh, it, it's, it's it, good. It right. feels great, yeah. Three, two, one, go. Oh, baby. It is still touching on the rotor, too. You can even hear it. All right. We're at 30 seconds now and still holding. And still kind of going. That's still counts. It's still going. I mean, it technically is still spinning. seconds. 42 seconds. Stop. 43.71. 40 seconds better on that one. We're going to do one more test, but we'll speed it up. Ready? Three, two, one, go. 46.3, so three seconds difference. Pretty good, we'll split it. So 44 seconds, somewhere around there. So obviously a huge improvement on the front. So Andrew, it doesn't sit on a throne of lies, totally redeemed himself. And uh, I think we might have something working here. So we now have to figure out what's going on on the back. All right, on that note, we're gonna close out. It's late, but I appreciate the help. Mike Preps, Andrew, and everybody in the live chat, all the Patreons. If you're not a Patreon, you want to join. Link in the description below. Again, links for all these products down below. Check it out. Next week, we're going to be working on the slipper clutch. We're going to put that in. New slipper clutch, slipper springs. Take out the uh, spinner and also doing a Kotaka oil mod on the side. So a lot of good things happening next week. But thanks for tuning in this week. And uh, if you have any comments below to what you think we should have done better or maybe some insight on what Andrew was uh, talking about, please post a comment down below. And, of course, I will see you guys next week.